Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, and welcome to Open Source Summit. Uh, in this talk, we are going to see how Zephyr or TAS is used or act as an electrical vehicle supply equipment. In other words, in short, it is called as an electrical charging station and um, using the open standard called Open Charge Point Protocol. So, my name is Saravanand. I'm a part of Linumis. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer or the embedded software engineer at Linumis. Over 13 years of experience uh, in the Linux, uh, working in a Linux, uh, I'm a developer and a contributor to the open source uh, projects like Linux kernel and uh, Zephyr Autos. Uh, about uh, Linumis, uh, it's a software servicing company which provides uh, uh, embedded software development and consulting and training in embedded Linux and Zephyr Autos project. So we do uh, uh, servicing in the range of uh, bootloader development and then kernel development, uh, new boot support packages, and also the device driver development. I live in Berlin. Okay. Here is the summary of uh, this talk. Um, first, we will check uh, uh, what is the uh, electrical vehicle and uh, how uh, uh, the current state of the infrastructure, uh, charging infrastructure and uh, what is the limitations uh, currently having, and then how does uh, Zephyr Ratas helps to improve the limitations uh, for achieving the uh, better charging infrastructure. And uh, this talk is primarily focused on the open choice point protocol. Uh, it's an open standard specification, so we will look into the why, what is the open charge point protocol or the OCPP, and then we will have a brief look into the specification internals. After that, uh, we will have a look into the OCPP implementation, uh, the uh, native implementation of the stack in the Zephyr Autos and how to consume it in the application layer. And after that, uh, we will have a look into this uh, electrical vehicle supply equipment uh, standards, uh, which is mainly used to connect between the charging station and uh, EV for uh, handshaking and delivering the power. And finally, we will look into the open uh, the current state of uh, OCPP in the Zephyr and uh, the future work. Okay. So electrical vehicle um, is an emerging market because of its advantage of uh, environment friendly, but uh, there is a limitation uh, uh, because of a lack of charging infrastructure. So electrical vehicle supply equipment or the charging station is uh, simply called as a charging station, which is used for the supply of electricity or the energy to the electrical vehicle, the electrical vehicle which uh, utilize that to the uh, battery charging. Uh, in comparison with the gasoline vehicle, um, like petrol station, which will take a few minutes to refill the fuel, uh, but one of the limitations with the electrical vehicle is uh, the amount of time it will take to recharge the battery is very huge, and also it occupies the parking space until it gets uh, recharged fully. So, but one of the advantage with the, the, the charging session is uh, which is a portable and it can be installed, easy to install in most of the parking place. So is it really need, a, need to be installed in the parking place because um, uh, like we cannot make it uh, installation in the petrol station or the gas station because we need a more parking lot. So it, the better place to install the charging station is uh, the existing parking place where we can utilize that. Uh, so in the nutshell, we need a more and more uh, lightweight distributed network so where we can employ that uh, instead of uh, handling uh, one the bulky uh, machine which can handle the multiple port like hundred ports of uh, charging vehicle, it can handle it. So we really need a distributed network where we have the parking lot, where we will have like a, the highways or else the hotels or even the working office space environment. So we have seen, um, so what is the limitation and uh, uh, what we really need is a distributed charging infrastructure and how does the Zephyr gonna help with this distributed charging infrastructure. So microcontrollers are more uh, suitable for the lightweighted applications. Uh, and then, yeah, for, for the microcontrollers, we obviously have one of the choices, uh, Zephyr Autos, which has uh, more uh, uh, advantages uh, in terms of its 
supports of multiple uh, Ethernet interface and then uh, the other interface which we'll go and see. Um, the Zephyr Atlas has its advantages like um, it has a native implementation of TCP IP stacks and then it can be directly used to the Ethernet controller. And apart from that, we can use uh, the internet infrastructure for the Wi-Fi controllers and a lot of Wi-Fi controllers which uh, supports uh, offloading, which means uh, we can send the payload and then the TCP or the IP packet will be framed by the offloading controllers. Uh, so we have the support in the uh, Zephyr Rotas for the offload socket option also. So which will uh, reduce the burden on the microcontroller which can focus on the application side. And uh, uh, one of the requirement for the EVSC is like when we are gonna, going to install the charging station in the highways, so like where it is in the remote areas, we have a lack of uh, internet infrastructure, so we can use uh, the modem as one of the internet facing interfaces. So Zephyr Atlas supports a modem like in one single die solution like NRF, where we have the application processor uh, or yeah, application CPU and also the modem can coexist in a single die. Otherwise, uh, also the Zephyr supports uh, other um, external modem uh, which works on the CMAX or the PPP or AT commands. And then uh, Zephyr itself supports uh, the variety of architecture supports like extension, uh, RISC V, ARM, and also the uh, because of that, um, we have a more and more platform supported. Uh, so in, if you want to uh, go be proof of concept, which will be helpful, like uh, the existing uh, platform with the Ethernet support or Wi-Fi can be used to, uh, as a proof of concept before going into a uh, real product use case. So as a EVSC uh, really wants to measure the, how much the power it is, uh, how much the power or the energy which is delivered to the EV, uh, the charging station should uh, employ it with the energy meter. So most of the energy industrial energy meter supports uh, digital communications like Modbus or uh, Modbus and then um, the UART or other serial MBUS modules. So thanks to Zephyr Autos, which supports the native support of the Modbus as well. And at at the end, we have uh, we are going to have the support for the open judgment protocol native stack in the Zephyr as well. So collectively, we have a lot of advantages. So why we should uh, go for the Zephyr as how it it would be helpful for uh, improving the charging infrastructure. In addition to that, uh, we do have a RFID reader, uh, which probably with the NFC stacks, and it's going to be integrated or the merge soon into the Zephyr Atlas. So we have seen so far um, what is the uh, drawbacks in the charging station, how does the Zephyr is gonna uh, help in that. So now we will um, briefly check into the open charge point protocols and uh, what is it is, why it is really needed in the electrical vehicle supply equipment or the charging stations. The open charge point protocol, or simply called as OCPP, is an application protocol which is used to communication between the electrical vehicle supply equipment and the central management system. So we know the charging station is to provide the power to the electrical vehicle, uh, but what is this uh, central management system is a kind of a backend server which will handle the user entity and how much uh, the charges how much energy has been used by the consumer on different uh, charging station, and based on that, the billing will be generated. So these databases will be maintained by the central management system. So it is, um, the Open Charge Point Protocol is established by uh, Open Charge Alliance. Uh, it is established by, um, in 2009, and since it has the advantage like it, it is designed to be the free open source and also interoperability support, uh, it becomes a global benchmark for throughout the EV industry to adapt the OCPP in the all the charging station, I would say. Okay, so does OCPP really need, a, need in the charging station is a question because uh, when, um, 
I have a private charging station which can directly connect to the electrical vehicle, then there is no need of a charging uh, the OCP protocol. But uh, really, when we have the public infrastructure install the EVSC, then we need a communication back to the back end, which is uh, supported by this uh, open charge point protocol. So I would say the open charge point protocol is uh, not an option for the public infrastructure and also I would say it is recommended for the private uh, infrastructure as well, you know, uh, private uh, charging station as well. Why? Uh, because we need a more and more distributed uh, net charging infrastructure. For that, uh, even the private contributor to the charging infrastructure, which will help the e whole EV industry, so or the EV segment. So when the private charging station is not in use, so it can lend for the public access, and uh, based on that, it, it can get boost the EV segment or the charging segment. So OCPP has been developed in the, uh, with the multiple versions, uh, starting from the V1.4 and 1.5, which are already obsolete, uh, which supports uh, uh, a different messaging format, which we will go going to see in the next slides. Uh, currently, we have the support of uh, version 1.6 and uh, version 2.0.1. And uh, with respect to current presentations, uh, we limit uh, the scope of uh, version 1.6. Okay, uh, if you are new to the electrical vehicle supply equipment or the charging, these are all the abbreviation which we'll be going to use in the following slide. Uh, so it would be helpful if you can see these are the observations. So CP meant for the charge point, and CP was a charge point operator who can handle the database or the maintenance of uh, the central system. And CS is the backend system, which is uh, central system. And then ID tag, ID tag. Uh, unique uh, identification used for to identify the user, uh, maybe the access card uh, where we can read the ID tag. And OCPP is an open charge point protocol. Then there are two messages which is, uh, which is framed by the OCPP. Uh, the PDU is a protocol defined unit and the RPC uh, which we will see in the next slides. Okay, the profiles and messages. The basic communication between the central system and the charge point are um, based on the predefined protocol defined unit or simply the PDU messages. So these are the basic building blocks between the communication between the charging station and the central system. So there are um, approximately the version 1.6 supports uh, 29 messages. Uh, uh, we are not going to see all those messages because of the time constraints, but these messages, messages are grouped into a profile based on the features and functionality. Um, here are the list of profiles supported by the version 1.6, uh, the core profile, which is um, the mandatory profile, um, basically handles the, the all the messages which are required for the charging and uh, stop charging, etc. Apart from that, we have the local authorization list message, and uh, yeah, which is mainly for to authorize when there is no connection be between the, the central system and the uh, charge point because of the network issue of anything. And then the charge point can uh, take a action like um, it can authorize the user if, it, if the user has been already authorized and it has the validity tag. Then we have the firmware management uh, profile, which is for the over the air update of the firmware for the charge point itself. So, we will not see all these profiles, but we limit to the core profile and uh, the, its messages. Here are the list of the messages which is supported by the core profiles. And out, again, uh, we are not going to see all of them, but at least we will pick uh, the messages which are essential for one complete charging cycles. So we will have a look into the authorize, uh, boot notification message, meter values, start-stop transaction, and then remote start-stop transactions. Okay, so boot notification is a PDU message, which is uh, the first message which is uh, which is charge point sends to the central system. So central system will uh, enumerate or discovers there is a charge point available in the network using uh, the boot notification message. And after a um, uh, startup or the reboot or the charge point initiate the communication with the central system. 
So the boot notification message uh, carries uh, the following uh, information like uh, charge point model, um, uh, charge point uh, vendor IDs, and then the ICC ID, IMSI ID. So no other PDU message should be sent uh, without acknowledgement or uh, of the, the boot notification or the acceptable of a central system. Okay, when the user wants to get into the access of the charging station, first he has to get authorized. So the unique identifier authorized um, is uh, unique identifier identifier is used for the authorization purpose. This unique identifier is read from the access card using uh, RFID on the charging station. Otherwise, there is other mechanism like when um, the mobile applications are like smartphone applications. Uh, smartphone mobile application, otherwise um, the web browser is used to uh, kind of a virtual ID directly. It can start communicating with the central system and then central system will uh, authorize the user. So when the, <coughs> when the user get authorized, then he can able to start charging its vehicle after connecting the connector into the EV from the char charging stations. So once we have uh, authorized, the user get authorized, uh, then uh, the charge station, after connecting the cables, the charge station um, can deliver the power to the electrical vehicle. After that, um, it can send a message, confirmation message uh, to the central system that uh, start transaction, uh, transaction has been already started uh, by sending the start transaction PDU message. Okay, once we have the start of the transaction, then uh, uh, if the battery get, uh, gets completed, otherwise uh, if user want to interrupt the, uh, st stop the charging, then he can hit a button on the charging station, then uh, the charge point can uh, terminate the power supply to the electrical vehicle. After that, it can send a stop transaction PDU message to the central system to notify that a transaction has been already st stopped. Okay, so, so far we have seen the stop transaction and boot notification, all these messages which originate from the charging station to the central system. But there is a way, as I said, uh, when the user wants to start a charging, uh, he can request to the central system using the mobile application or the web browser, then the uh, charging station can request uh, uh, start transaction message to the charge point. So this is used by uh, the two messages called the remote start transaction and uh, remote stop transactions. Uh, upon receiving this uh, remote start transaction, stop transaction, uh, charge station can decide whether it can start or stop based on the, the local environment, like uh, whether the power supply is available to deliver the EV or else the cable is connected. So once it is done, then again it should follow the same process of what we have seen in the last previous slide, like start transaction, stop transaction. So one of the peculiar case with here is uh, the remote stop transactions. It is not necessary that this uh, st remote start and stop has to be always the pair. Even if the local, uh, like you charge station sends a start transaction, those transactions will be available on the central system. So remote start stop transaction message can be sent from the central system for already start, uh, started the ch charging session. Okay, there are some cases where malfunction of the cable retentions, so like after authorization, the user has to get the cable and then connect to the charges. If there is any malfunctions happens with that, then he can request the CPU operator, the, the CPU operator, so that the charge point operator can send an unlock connector message from the central system to the charging station. Okay. So we have seen uh, the start transaction, stop transaction, which has the, uh, which carries the uh, information like uh, which connector it has started, and also at the time of starting, uh, the meter values are sent, and uh, also the, at the time of stopping, the meter value has to be sent. So based on this stop and start transaction meter values, the buildings are generated. How much the power has been consumed? Uh, apart from that, uh, in the start and between the start and stop transaction. So the charge point can may collect the information of the uh, current meter readings and also send it to the central system. Um, the purpose is uh, like the central system may have the kind of a 
uh, graph mechanism to plot how much uh, the charging is consumed in, and for those purposes uh, it is uh, the meter values are used and um, we can the meter values carries the values like a connector id and uh, the current meter values it is like frequently sent from the charging station to the central system so we have seen so far the specifications uh, what are the basic messages of uh, the predefined unit messages and um, these predefined unit messages are not sent to a central system directly instead it will be wrapped into a uh, or encoded into a wrapper called a remote procedure call messages this carries um, a message type and then unique identifier and the payload of uh, the ocp ppdu message itself so the message type uh, are primarily categorized into three types so one the call to sender request and uh, call to set is to reply or getting the response for, for the call message and then call error if in case of any error or the failure with the reasons the ocpp specification is mentioned that it should that should not be a new call message originate either from the charge point or central system unless the other uh, until the previous call message has been responded or time dot which means uh, there will be only two call messages exist in between the charge point and the central system at any instance uh, one originated from the charge point another originated from the central system and uh, that should not be new one uh, new call message should be started before the response of the time dot so we have seen the, the message frame and here as we will see the example for the call request message frame and also the call response message frames in details so we have the message type of one byte which carries a constant two for the call request and um, we have the message id which is used for the purpose of identifying the message itself so it should be the unique identifier of any string of 1 to 32 bytes after that the action uh, which will carry the pdu uh, what is the purpose of the pdu like uh, the boot notification or start transaction or stop transaction and then the payload itself the payload what we have uh, used in this uh, presentation is uh, there are two type of uh, payloads uh, supported or pdu message format supported in the ocp 1.6 uh, one is the json format and other one is uh, soap but with the later version or that version 2.0 uh, only we have the json format so throughout this slides we have used only the json format so here we can see the example for the boot notification and then uh, the charge point vendor ids and the models has been sent on the call request and we will get into the call response as uh, the message type constant 3 and then uh, the unique message identifier which is used to send for the call request here the same should be here so it can match which packet uh, the response has been received then we have the response uh, json for the payload for yeah the boot notifications so we have so far seen what is the specification what specification has said about the message format and then the message sending in the wrapper but how could we really visualize uh, into the complete charging station so we will see here uh, uh, one of the example use cases because we have we cannot able to cover all of them but here we have mentioned one of the use cases like how the user interaction between the ev and evsc and then the evsc to Uh, charging station uses the ocpp pdu messages the first the user has to get the access for that purpose he shows uh, the access card to the evsc then the evsc we will have a card reader like nfc or the rfi id reader which will read the id tag once it will <coughs> once it read the id tag um, it will be it will send the ocp authorized request message to the central system and then central system will check all the database like navigating whether the id tag is matched and um, it it is already in the valid state or else it's expired or blocked and all these states so once we will take it to the hop, happy path here like uh, the id tag has been already matched and the, then we will get the response like uh, authorized so once authorized the user is able to 
uh, the connector is released from the EVSC, so user can able to pull in the connector from the EVSC and then connect to the EV. Then once the cable is connected, uh, user can able to press a button of the start button available on the charging station. Uh, once charging, when the start button is pressed, uh, EVSC then release the circuit uh, for um, delivering the energy and then uh, it can send the OCP message that um, the start transaction message that uh, transaction has already started with the meter readings when it was about to start. So once successful transaction, uh, then the meter values is continuously sent from the EVSC, like how much consumption by the EV, uh, until the stop transaction or the, the complete charge, charging cycle ends. So when the user wants to interrupt or um, stop the charging, then he can hit the button on the stop, char uh, stop charging button on the EVSC, then the EVSC will shut down the power to the EV, and then it can send uh, the measure the energy meter, what is the last reading of after shutting down, then it can send uh, the OCP message stop transaction to the central system. After that, um, uh, cable can be disconnected and um, inserted to the EVSC. So we have seen one complete charging session uh, use cases uh, for how the user interacts with the charging station directly for the start and stop chargings. We will have another example which showcase here, uh, the user can directly interact with the central system uh, instead of EVSC. So if a user can have a, a web authorize or um, the smartphone which can able to <clears throat> interact with the central system, uh, then the virtual RFID is used here <clears throat> to communicate with the central system and then the central system will check the database and then it will authorize the user. Once he has been authorized, uh, the EVSC will unlock the connector so the connector can be, the user can pull in the connector and connect to the EV vehicle. After that, um, the user can start the transaction or the start charging by pressing a button on the, uh, the application and it goes to the central system and then central system will send a message, remote start transaction message. After that, uh, the EV has to solely responsible to decide whether the, uh, it can deliver the power to the uh, electrical vehicle based on uh, the, whether the good power is available to that uh, and also the cable is connected in the proper things of all this. So once uh, charging is started, then it can send a start transaction message to the central system. It carries the same, uh, the cycle what we have seen in the previous slides, like it sends uh, meter values frequently. After that, uh, when the user wants to stop, uh, then he can uh, yeah, request the uh, um, the central system using a web application or else the mobile phone smart application. Then uh, the central system will send the remote stop transaction. After that, the EVAC will shut down the power and uh, will do the stop charging sequence. After that, it will send a stop transaction PDU message to the central system. And finally, the EVAC or the user can disconnect the EVAC uh, the, the cable from the EV and to the E can connect back to the EVSC. Okay, so far we have seen how the OCPP specification uh, messages appears and how it has been wrapped into uh, uh, RPC message to communicate with the central system. Uh, so now we get into the how the protocol has been implemented in the Zephyr Autos. Since OCPP is uh, application protocols, uh, so it can coexist with the MQTT, uh, co-app, and other application protocols. Uh, the OCPP sends a message using the socket APIs, uh, especially the web socket APIs, to the central system in any of the network interface, like Ethernet, uh, Wi-Fi, or the modem. And then um, the OCPP exposes a public API for the application use case, so application can directly uh, use the use those APIs to send uh, data to the central system or back and forth. Uh, 
Okay, now we will look into the uh, how OCPP stack is implemented in, in the uh, Zephyr Autos. So as I said, the, we have um, native, at the bottom we have the native WebSocket implementation of the Zephyr and then uh, in the top we have the application which consumes uh, OCPP consumer APIs. So from the bottom up, uh, we have the RPC message format and above that we have the JSON PDU format. Uh, then we have the list of profile implementation, the core profile which has the start transaction, stop transactions, and then we have the interesting one which is uh, the key management in the right side. What is this key management is, um, we have the key value pair which is maintained uh, or used to communicate between the, uh, the charging station and uh, and uh, central, central system. Um, if, for example, so we have the meter values, uh, it has to be sent frequently, but how much time it has to send, uh, so this is uh, configurable using the key, man key value pair. Apart from that, we have um, heartbeat messages, so the timing between the heartbeat, uh, how much time it has to send, uh, it can be read from the um, central system and also can be uh, changed by the, from the central system, and for that purpose, we have the key value pair. Then we have the OCPP internal implementation, which carries the socket connection and the reconnection handlings. So user has nothing to do with the, uh, when the uh, internet or uh, the socket get disconnected, the OCPP stack itself can able to reconnect, establish the connection. And uh, we have the user notification handlings, uh, for example, so when the uh, central system sends uh, some of the requests to the, uh, charge point, then uh, the, it has to notify to the user, uh, like start charging, stop charging, otherwise uh, even uh, the internal request from the OCVP, like uh, the, the meter value, the frequent, frequency has to read from the application, that will be used by the user register callback in the unit functions. Now we will uh, look into the API, uh, which is exposed to the consumer. Um, the first one is uh, open judgment the OCPP underscore init API, um, which is uh, supplied with the um, in, uh, charge point information and uh, central system information. So, uh, the charge point model vendor and the number of connectors are the mandatory information which needs to be filled to the, yeah, for the charge point information and then central, central system information like IP address, which is a resolved one, and then port and web socket URLs are supplied here. So before initializing the OCP library, um, the network interface should be already up and running because uh, once we call the OCPP in it, then it will try to establish the socket connection with the central system and then it sends the boot notification message. Then we have the uh, pair of uh, session handling APIs, so uh, OCPP session open and close. So, each connector then the charge point may support n number of connectors and each connector should have uh, open uh, a new unique uh, session handling before uh, any of the further uh, uh, like start transaction or the stop transaction api is used the session management is uh, solely sole purpose of uh, internal to the stack and nothing relevant to the specifications okay so from the application, so when it wants to uh, get authorized, then it can use the OCP underscore authorized API, uh, which carries the ID tag as an input, and then we will get the status as a response when the status may carry the invalid, accepted, blocked, etc. So once uh, we have the response with the OCP underscore auth underscore accepted, then the user is allowed to start charging. So we have this OCP underscore start transaction messages, so like uh, when, Charge, charging station has already started delivering the power, it can read the energy meter values and then it can send the start transaction message to notify that the central system uh, transaction has been started. So it is binded with the connector ID and then uh, what is the energy meter at the time of start. Then once we have the, uh, <coughs> yeah. and the transaction has been started, uh, then user 
callback, the register callback and the unit function will be called from the stack uh, uh, using the reason like get meter values, and just to read the meter values. So, uh, so it is uh, recommended that this callback function needs to be written as quick as possible, like the meter value should not be read in the callback itself, maybe uh, under the parallel thread which can uh, read the and um, uh, can share between the uh, this callback function and the, the, the ex under the thread. And um, the other reasons may be like a st start charging and stop charging, which is originated from the central system. Once uh, the complete charging cycle has completed, then we can have, we can use the application may use uh, OCP underscore stop transaction with uh, yeah, the reading from the energy meter. Okay, we have seen uh, so far the OCPP, which is used to primarily between the charge point and the central system. Uh, but does uh, EV, EVAC really complete with that? Not really, because uh, we have the real line shaking between uh, uh, the charge point and the electrical vehicle and to deliver the power, which is uh, yeah, mentioned by the uh, standard IEC 16. Uh, 851 and ISO 15118. Unfortunately, these uh, specification of the standards are not open and uh, we can see a uh, yeah, very uh, overview about that. So we have uh, two mechanisms for handshaking. One is for the control pilot and another one is proximity pilot. Control pilot is mainly used for the communication uh, to negotiate the charging level of the car and the charging station and then proximity serves for the cable detection and uh, current limitation. So OCPP, I would say the OCPP part will cover uh, uh, 40 to 50 percentage of EVSC. The other part is still covered by the application with the IEC implementation. So if you will see the use cases here, uh, once the um, user got authorized, then it will be in the state of A1, which uh, the control pilot uh, the values is uh, uh, the voltage level in that world. After that, the cable is connected to the EV, then it will drop to the nine voltage. Uh, by detecting the cable is connected, then the EVAC can prepare for the charging and it will, uh, it will communicate to, or it will notify the electrical vehicle that uh, the, um, the charging is charging, it is ready to power the charging, uh, deliver the charging. Um, so the PWM signal is used with the Nine voltage. After detecting the PW signal by the EV, then EV will pull into the pull pull down the control pilot voltage to the six voltage. So uh, the charging is started, and then uh, we have the we can send the start charging OCPP, and then we have the EVAC stopped once we get uh, full charging, and uh, we will enter into the state like C1 and uh, stop charging. So. Once uh, the user presses the stop button, it can come into the default state the B1 and then uh, the ca cable can be disconnected so it will go to the state A A1 or 12. Okay, so we are almost come to the end of the presentation. Uh, uh, here the state like uh, the OCPP uh, is currently the under uh, review and it will be get merged after our review is completed. Then currently we have a 1.1.6 core profile is supported and then the future work is uh, the TLS support and 1.6 optional profile and 2.0.1 supports. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, one second. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, this was really clear to me. Um, the, Diagrams really helped in terms of explaining um, each of the steps and in order for this overall charging workflow. Okay. Um, one thing that perhaps isn't um, so apparent um, is really this start transaction yes. um, phase, right? Whereby uh, the uh, charge point equipment sends this uh, request to the central system. So is this a required step in order for the vehicle to begin charging or is this purely to send some information to the central system to like notify them? Okay. Is this a critical part or, or is this a blocking operation or is this like sort of? Okay. 
So the main purpose of OCPP is, as I said, of the, it has to communicate to the central system so that central system know how to, um, how much the power has been consumed by the user and then it will generate the billings. So for that, the star transaction should be notified to the central system and then also the stop transaction has to be notified to the central system with the meter values. So it can, uh, the central system uh, will calculate based on the how much uh, the start of the energy meter and uh, what is the end value of the energy meter and based on the difference, it will mm -hmm. translate into the billings. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Hello, uh, very good presentation. And uh, I would like to extend your topic about ISO 15118 a little bit. Yep. So last standard is more about uh, encryption safety and one major part of it is plug and play. Okay. So yeah, so but I don't see any content on your slides and I'm curious about uh, uh, does your company support such a feature and uh, uh, when, when, when we do plug and play, we find okay. which is so difficult to connect your charger, your charge point to okay. the vehicle. So you have to let your charger to notice uh, who is using the, who is using it, okay. and uh, which account it, it belongs to, and how to, when to start chargers. So by that, by that standard, the ISO, uh, ISO 15118, mm -hmm. uh, Provides a very complicated uh, handshaking certification procedure layer. So how uh, uh, how does Saver uh, helps you on it, or does it have, doesn't doesn't have, doesn't help at all? <laughs> so, okay. so, thank you. So since uh, it is a closed source, uh, we cannot able to explain much into the current presentation. Uh, otherwise, we have implemented to one of the customer the EV uh, with full blown uh, with the specification of uh, 11518 yes is that answers your question uh, i think it's more than that but i can uh, contact you with you later sure thank you okay thank you very much oh, yeah. there's one ah, there's one more yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> I hey i was just wondering um how often does the meter pull uh, back to the central system? And also, what happens if you miss the stop transaction from the central system? Uh, I, you know, I don't want to end up like getting free energy from this uh, charge point for forever, but I was just curious how uh, OPP or OCPP handles that. OK. Uh, for your first question, it is configurable values so that uh, how often the meter value has to be sent. As I said, it's a, that is a key value pair which is read from the central system and also it can modify the values. So based on that, uh, the meter values is been sent. And regarding the, the last question, uh, it's uh, stop transaction has been missed by the central system, you mean, or? Um, because the no, stop if the charge, transaction. No, if the charge point misses the stop transaction from the central system. Okay, so central system does not send a stop transaction message to the charge point. The charge point is the one which will notify the central system that uh, transaction has been ended with a stop transaction message. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you.